Today we're going to look at exponential functions, specifically how to graph them. So we'll see our first example is we want to graph 3 to the x power. 3 is our base and all exponential functions come in the form of a times b to the x if you will and we'll add a little to that in a moment where b is that base. If the absolute value of this base is greater than 1 we say this is an exponential growth type problem and if the absolute value of this b is less than 1 in other words some fraction between 0 and 1 in absolute value we say that's a decay so we're going to be asked to graph this find its domain range and state its horizontal asymptote only way to do this if we haven't ever done it before is to take and make a chart let's pick some numbers here I can put a zero in anything to the zero power is one three to the first power is three three to the second power is nine what about negatives three to the negative one power is one third and three to the negative two power is one ninth so I can graph all those points here's zero one one three 2, 9 puts me, oof, puts me around here. Negative 1 and 1 third is about here, and negative 2 and 1 ninth is a little lower than that. So you'll see that since that base number was a positive number, we call this a growth and you'll see that it rises very rapidly that's the characteristic of all exponential functions and it appears and actually is that we have a horizontal asymptote here and that horizontal asymptote is going to be along this line here which is the line of y equals zero. My domain talks about what are my possible x values. Well you see that this arrow goes to the right forever and to the left forever so in this case we have all reals. So for my range we'll look at the function and say hey my y goes up forever but it doesn't go down forever because of this asymptote or borderline. In fact it will never what power can I raise 3 to? What power can I raise a positive number to to get 0? That never happens. So y has to be greater than 0 for my range. The horizontal asymptote, as we already stated, is this horizontal line of y equals 0. So now we're going to do some things to these exponentials. And we're looking at HK form once again. So we'll notice that H in this case equals negative 5 and K in this case is equal to negative 2. So what that does is it takes and moves my origin over 5 and down 2. So I'll do A little crosshairs there. I'll make up a new parent function of 2 to the x. Plug in some values. I'll go negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. 2 squared is going to be 4. 2 to the first is 2. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. And I'll graph that all from this point here. So here's 0, 1. Here's 1, 2. 2, 4. Negative 1, 1 half. Negative 2, 1 fourth. Like so. 
you notice this base number is not quite as big so this graph is not rising as quickly but it's still rising so it's a growth problem it appears that my horizontal asymptote is right along this horizontal here so that has an equation of y equaling negative 2 domain it appears I'm going to the right forever and to the left forever so again this is all reals but my range goes up forever but not down forever it stops right at this asymptote line so it appears that y is greater than negative 2 You'll notice in this case that I have this A term out in front, so this is going to be our Y multiplier. So I have A equaling 2, H equaling 1, K equaling 9. So if I move over to 1 and up 9, right around here. Oops, I lied. That's a negative 9, so I'm going to go down here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Sorry about that. Like so. And I'll look at my parent function, which appears to be 3 to the x. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1. Two. This goes to nine, three, one, one third, one ninth. I've already seen that before, and we do it from this point here. So zero one puts me here, one three, here two nine, here negative one one third and one ninth so there's our graph asymptote appears to be y equals negative nine domain goes both ways all reals range goes as low as negative nine but no lower so y is greater than negative nine So in this case, we've got a decay problem because this base is a number whose absolute value is less than 1. It appears that this is a B value. And then we have our H and K. So H equals negative 5. K is equal to 8. B is equal to 3. And A is actually equal to negative 1 because I have this negative out here. My exponential is one half to the x power. Don't be afraid of the fraction. Plug some numbers in, negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two again. One half squared is one fourth. One half to the first is one half. Anything to the zero power is one. One half to the negative one, take the reciprocal. So that's two. And one half to the negative two, take the reciprocal and square, so that's two squared or four. So now I'm going to move back five, one, two, three, four, five, and then up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Start from the crosshair here, but now I have an x multiplier and a y multiplier. So I'm going to do that in each of these cases. My x multiplier is 3, so I have negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6, and a y multiplier of negative 1. So I have negative 4, negative 2, 2, negative 1, negative 1 half, negative 1 fourth. I'll do all that from this point right here. 
So I go back six, down four, two, three, four, five, six, down one, two, three, four. I'll go back three, down two, one, two, three, one, two, zero, negative one, over three, down a half, and over six, down a quarter. So in this case, the domain, it appears to be going both ways once again, so this is all reals. The range, however, in this case, appears to go down forever and only goes up as high as this value here, which is 8. So horizontal asymptote is y equals 8, and y is less than 8. Now, within these exponential growth and decays, we have a general equation as well that can be written as c times 1 plus r to the t power, where y is our final amount, c is our initial amount, and we call r our growth and decay rate, and t is time. So we're going to do some application problems involving this. So in this case, pressure of the atmosphere is 14.7 pounds per cubic inch at the Earth's surface. It decreases about 20% for each mile above an altitude uh, up to 50 miles. And we want to write the exponential model for the situation and estimate the atmospheric pressure at an altitude of 10 miles. Well, we have y equals c times 1 plus or minus r to the t power. Now, in theory, this talks about time, but we have no time in this problem, so miles is going to act as our time because for every mile we raise another percentage. So that's going to increase like t would increase, but this is again in miles. So we start off with 14.7 as our initial amount. We're raising 20%, so that's plus 0.2 for every mile we increase. So we'll call that our t, and that gives us our y. This is our model. And then we can solve that model by plugging 10 into the t value. So we have 14.7, 1.2 raised to the 10th. And then we can evaluate that on our calculator. And that gives us about 91.01. Let's say 2 if we round to the hundredth pounds per cubic inch. Similar problem, we've got the uh, number of wolves in the wild uh, increasing at a rate of 3.5 percent per year, so now the T is going to reference years. Your environmental studies class has counted 42 wolves in the area. If the rate increases continually, how many wolves will there be in five years? And then we want to know, as a second part of the question, how many years will the population double? All right, so what we know in the first place, again, we have y equals c times 1 plus or minus r to the t. So our model is going to be y equals our initial number of wolves is 42. We're increasing by 3.5% a year. So that's plus 0.035 to the t. Now they want to know how many we're going to have in five years. That's pretty easy. So y is equal to 42, 1.035 raised to the fifth power. That's just a calculator. The answer we get here is 49.88. Can't have a 0.88 of a wolf, so we just say 
we round to the nearest whole number, or not even round to the nearest whole number, we've got to truncate, so we have 49 wolves. Now, the second problem is more complex in that we want to know when the population doubles. So we want to know when we go from 42 to double that. So 84 is equal to 42 to the 1 plus 0.035 to the t power. We want to solve for an unknown variable and at this point we really don't know how to do that. The only thing we could do is isolate this exponential. So we have 2, I divide by 42 to both sides, is equal to 1.035 to the t power. Now in order to solve for this we're going to have to do some calculator work. So let's get those out. So we can see here that this is just going to be an exponential equation. We're going to type into our calculator 1.035 raised to the t, or in this case raised to the x is the same thing. And then I'm going to graph another equation of y equals 2. Now when we graph these, and we can just graph this I guess in the standard window, that would be fine, so zoom 6. And you'll notice there's our exponential it's starting to rise, and there's another line. We see this doesn't intersect, so it's going to take a while for this to double since it took five years for the population to raise seven wolves. We want to raise a total of 42 wolves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend my window. And I'll go quite a bit. Uh, extending my window means I've got to change my x value. And we'll go from negative 10 instead of the 10 to 100. See if this will happen in 100 years. Most likely it will. But we just want to look at it. So I graph this now. And there's my exponential. And you'll notice there's my number 2. So if I find this intersection I can find out how long it took for those two equations to be equal. So I go second, calculate, intersect, and first curve, enter, second curve, enter, and third curve, find my intersection, and it's about 20.14 years or 20.15 years is my intersection. This is going to be my answer here. So x equals 20.15 years. Those are all our examples for today. Fill out your lesson summary and do your connected.